If you save me from here, I will believe in you. Based on a true story. Let me take you back to three years ago. Three years ago, this weak friend of yours was unaware of seizing and holding onto the banner of Islam. I had tons of questions, and I had my own answers to them. In fact, all the truths were right in front of me, but I was persistently running away from them. It was during my high school years. I had a different lifestyle than my family. I was aware of Allah, but I did not want to accept our Prophet, peace be upon him. We had a music band. I was the lead singer of the band. I was carried away by every moment that my eyes and heart felt. If you asked me back then, I would have said that everything gave me pleasure. Of course, not everything was that innocent. Some things were hidden behind closed doors. There was a pure heart waiting for me at home. So delicate, so scared. Eyes that only had worry and love for her child. I would put on a hijab on the stairs before entering the house. I was afraid because, more than being afraid of Allah seeing me, I was afraid that my family would see me. These were the times when I did not understand my mom's value. I was caught up in worldly pleasures with my friends. I was too blind to see and too deaf to hear anything. Actually, it would always happen like this. I used to look forward to the times my dad wasn't around and sneak out of the house to be able to have fun and be comforted in the arms of mindlessness. I was surrendering myself to the mindlessness I was comforted in. Even when my mind became clear, my conscience wouldn't leave me alone. At that very moment, Laura called. My friend, the voice of my conscience, Laura. That day, some things had changed inside of me. Only one phrase from our long talks affected me the most. You're on a path and the owner of the path is calling you. I couldn't stop thinking about what Laura said the entire night, and I finally found the courage to look up the videos she always mentioned. I watched so many videos again, again, and again. The radiance of truth was illuminating me, but I turned my back and followed the shadow that formed in front of me up until a mighty hand truly affected my life. This life was his, and he was reminding me of this. Would you think about death on a wonderful day? How nice it was. The sound of the fairy and seagulls. It was so peaceful. It made me think of what else could give me the peace that this moment was giving me. We were talking again. Today's topics, different than other days, were about death and the day of resurrection. I did not like this conversation that much, but Laura was explaining it to me relentlessly, persistently. In this beautiful city of this remarkable place of Istanbul, the sun was continuing to beam at us. And we went to the outdoor deck of the ferry and held on to the bars. The sea was no longer blue, but had turned black. The sky wasn't that nice anymore. Was it a mighty hand that wanted to tell me something? The day was divided into two parts. The left side was pitch black. The right side was sunny. People were flocking to the deck to take photos, but at that moment, rain was pouring heavily. Suddenly, people started rushing to the doors to get inside. For the first time, I was running away from the sea and the sky that gave me comfort. We were all running away. 
Before realizing what was going on, we found ourselves inside. People were looking at each other with fear in their eyes. I had to call my family. Could I save her? Was I going to save myself? I needed to be calm. I needed to be cool-headed. After a while, very violent sounds started occurring. Cracks were forming on the ferry because hail as big as our fists were falling from the sky. A manifestation of glory that didn't allow the voice of even the person next to you to be heard was speaking loudly. A veil was covering the windows. The fog surrounded us on all sides, concealing everything. But what were we going to do with this fear coming from the sounds? Your captain speaking, I cannot see ahead. We could hit something any minute. Please stand in a place where you can put on a life jacket and protect yourself. We could hit something? How could this happen? But today was such a nice day. And slam. The sound that separated me from all my thoughts was a huge breakwater. We crashed just like the captain said we would and the ferry was collecting water from below. Three doctors were eagerly and desperately helping those who fainted. They told everybody to stay where they were and to sit on the floor. We did what we were told and sat down. And the bad part was that we didn't even have a life jacket. What's more, we couldn't have prevented this from happening. Laura was praying next to me. What was I going to do? What if everything was right and I die? What would happen? What were they going to ask me when I die? Is today my last day? Is this my last breath? I needed to take refuge in someone. I needed to take refuge in the one. If everything is true, save us from this place. Because if you save us, I will become how you want me to be, I promise. The seconds I passed on the ferry felt like death. We experienced minutes that felt like hours. Finally, three search and rescue teams arrived within 15 minutes. They took us to shore. When we got off the ferry, my whole world was shaken. After parting with Laura, I started walking home. When I came home, I saw the accident on the news. I was the one who experienced this, and my family was completely unaware. When I told them everything, my dad's response was, Indeed, we belong to Allah, and indeed to him we will return. How could he say this phrase, which is only meant for the dead, to his daughter who almost died? Did he surrender to his Lord to this extent? Then why was I still trembling with fear? I went to my room to be alone and escape my thoughts. As soon as I entered the room, the translation of the Quran caught my attention. I was calling out to my Lord. I believe in you, my Lord. I believe. I believe, my Lord. But tell me something to establish complete firmness in my heart. I grabbed the Quran in my hand and started turning the pages to talk to my Lord. A verse spoke to me in a page I came across. That page, Surah Yunus 22. It is he who enables you to travel on land and sea until when you are in ships and they sail with them by a good wind and they rejoice therein. There comes a storm wind and the waves come upon them from every place and they expect to be engulfed. They supplicate Allah, sincere to him in religion. If you should save us from this, we will surely be among the thankful. My God, how cruel I am and how merciful you are. Such a blessing to such a helpless person like me. I was ashamed. I was happy. I was crying. Were these tears of sadness or joy or both? 
I believe Allah. I swear I believe. I was disrespectful to you, how wrong it was of me to even say, if you save me, I will worship you. But despite my mistakes, you didn't abandon me, you didn't take offense. Allow me to be a faithful servant to you for the rest of my life. Don't let this small boat sink in this world's large waves, my lord. Just like you took your servant, Yunus, peace be upon him, out from the belly of the whale to the safety of the shore, take me to the safety of the shore as well, O Allah. Yes, exactly three years have passed since that event. I wanted to tell my story. I wanted this event, which was the turning point in my life, to guide others, so that it would give them hope too.